When it comes to long-term food storage, powdered foods are a great addition alongside everything else that you have. This is because of their long shelf life, they're compact, they're usually nutrient rich, and the most important factor, they don't require refrigeration. So just because a disaster or emergency happens doesn't mean that your meal plan needs to be a disaster. With some of these powdered foods I'm going to talk about today, you can really spice up a bunch of different dishes and at the very least bring a touch of comfort and normalcy to the dinner table during these stressful times. Now keep in mind, these powdered foods, some of them are not going to be as good as the real thing. You just can't replicate the taste and texture of real butter. But some of these do taste identical to the fresh products. And even though some of these aren't exactly like the real thing, they do taste pretty good and they will improve a bland meal or a recipe. Also, before we get into this list, make sure and pay attention to the ingredients. The only way you can really control what is in your food is to freeze dry it yourself. A Harvest Dry freeze dryer is a little bit expensive, so that's off the table for some people. But it is the most nutritious and healthy way to freeze dry your food and even create some of these powders. However, like I said, that is a big investment up front. So buying some of these prepackaged powdered foods may be the route to go, maybe as you save up to get that Harvest Right freeze dryer. So let's go ahead and get into the list here. And it's sort of interesting and funny to me that in an emergency, when the store shelves are running low, people tend to go for three things first, and that's milk, eggs, and bread. I gotta get the bread and milk. Oh my God, I gotta get the bread and milk. They said snow! I gotta get the bread and milk! I honestly don't know why. Maybe that's because I already have those stockpiled and that's not on the top of my list. But because of that, let's go ahead and start off with the milk and eggs, and then I'll get into bread a little bit later. Powdered milk is one of the, I, I think, should be a staple in your preparedness pantry. There are a bunch of different brands of powdered milk. I would say the cheaper stuff, steer away from that, make sure and get the, the name brand products. They're going to taste a lot better. Morning Moo from August and Farms is absolutely my favorite. But there are just so many different things you can do with milk from drinking it straight to actually putting it in recipes, baking things, a lot of different things that you're going to need milk for. And without refrigeration, these powdered milks are absolutely essential. Some of the store-bought powdered milks are going to last probably around two years, but some of the other ones can last 10 years, and Augustine Farms, their morning moo lasts up to 20 years. So you can get the powdered milk with a super long shelf life, and it is something that you will use on a daily basis. Eggs are another one that if you do a lot of baking that are absolutely essential, Plus, eggs are a reliable source of protein and essential nutrients. They're just a great food to keep in your prepper pantry. I have the Harvest Right freeze dryer, and we have chickens here at the house. So I have basically an endless supply of eggs. I've probably got close to 500 freeze-dried eggs at this point. But eggs are fantastic for just making a breakfast, for putting in different recipes, so having a, a little bit of egg powder stocked in your pantry is one of those essential things to have. Next, I have butter powder, and this goes along the same, th same lines with baking and things like that. Butter powder doesn't taste bad, but it's not the same thing as store-bought butter. It's not going to melt like normal butter would, so putting it on pancakes or putting it on toast, it's not going to melt for you. It's still going to taste okay, and it's going to make something that's a little bit bland and boring taste a little better, but it doesn't quite, it doesn't melt, and I'm not a big fan of that, just that butter taste. Same reason I don't eat straight mayonnaise. Butter is also important for a lot of different recipes. So even if you don't mix the butter up and reconstitute it, you can put that butter powder in certain recipes and it will taste exactly the same as the store-bought butter. Now, butter doesn't have quite as long a shelf life as, say, the milk, but Augustine Farms or properly packaged butters can last up to 10 years. 
Next, we move on to peanut butter powder. And I think everyone should have peanut butter powder in their pantry. Keep in mind with these powders, the fats in any sort of food that has a lot of fat in it isn't going to have that super long shelf life. So make sure you get that peanut butter powder with the lowest fat content. This These peanut butter powders can last anywhere from a couple years, five years, all the way up to 15 years. Again, Augustin Farms has peanut butter powder that lasts 15 years. But peanut butter powder is absolutely fantastic. And you can mix this up and make a spread. Tastes a little bit different than the regular. But again, with that slice of bread or making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're really not going to be able to tell that much of a difference. And in a in an emergency situation, it's going to be much better than some bland meal with or without it. And again, as far as baking, peanut butter powder will give you a lot of different options. And then sort of along the same lines, we've got powdered honey. And powdered honey is good to have. I wouldn't say it's essential, though, because honey doesn't necessarily go bad when if it's real honey. It may crystallize, but you can reconstitute it a little bit, heat it up, and turn it back into the, the normal consistency. But powdered honey is one of those things that can add a lot to the different meals that you're making. Whether you're putting it in dips and dressings, different, uh, using it as a baking ingredient for cakes and muffins and things like that, or just mixing it up and putting it on muffins or toast or, you know, whatever it is that you want, you might want that honey for. And just like regular honey, powdered honey boasts an indefinite shelf life, and it's loaded with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, vitamin B, vitamin C, calcium, just a lot of different things which are really healthy for you. So while you may not need, you know, 30, 40 pounds of powdered honey, it's good to have some in your preparedness pantry. Okay, so I mentioned I was going to talk about bread earlier, and this is where biscuits, biscuit mixes and cake mixes, things like that come in. Now, these don't have a super long shelf life. These are only good for a couple of years, and that's because of the ingredients that are incorporated in these mixes, the baking powder being the main one. After a while, that baking powder doesn't activate anymore, so that baking, the mix isn't going to work. But these are fantastic to have in your preparedness pantry, whether you're talking about pancake mixes, muffin mixes, uh, anything like that, because it makes putting these together really easy. And if you have the ingredients that I talked about above, like the milk and the eggs and the butter, you can incorporate those in these. Some of these mixes call for those, so you can add those in and then mix that up and you're good to go. But again, these don't have a super long shelf life, which leads me to the next few, which are flour, baking soda, and baking powder. And with these, you don't necessarily need these baking mixes. This is a few more steps that you need to take by adding these together to create that, you know, that pancake mix, that biscuit mix. But these stored separately are going to have a much longer shelf life. And you're going to be able to do a lot more with them. Flour you can use for making bread, tortillas, biscuits, and, and all sorts of things with flour. And if you keep that baking powder separate from the flour, then you don't risk that baking powder not activating when you need to. And baking soda and baking powder are, are pretty similar. They're both a sodium bicarbonate, but baking soda requires an acid and the liquid to become activated to help baked goods rise. It's a leavening agent. Baking powder includes the sodium bicarbonate as well as an acid, so it only needs liquid to become activated. And once baking powder expires, basically it turns into baking soda, so it can still be used. Baking soda is great in preparedness. It has a bunch of different uses. It can be used for cleaning it's got medical uses but heartburn treatment skin rash and inflammation treatment a bunch of different things as well as personal hygiene you can make toothpaste out of baking soda mouthwash deodorant a bunch of different things so baking soda is one of those staples in your preparedness pantry whether you are using it to cook or you are using it for something else from the store it usually has about a three-year shelf life but stored properly, it will last indefinitely. 
Next, we have cheese powder, and this is one where you need to make sure you look at the ingredients, and not all of these are created equal. Some of them are going to taste good. Some of them not so good. Some of them are not going to have much flavor at all, but cheese powder is fantastic to have in your preparedness pantry because without refrigeration, options are limited when it comes to cheese. Again, this is not going to be the same thing as a slice of fresh cheddar cheese or anything like that but it can be added to recipes you can make macaroni and cheese with a little bit of the powdered butter that i talked about before it can be used to sprinkle on popcorn just a bunch of different uses for this powdered cheese and the shelf life again it depends on the manufacturer but you're looking at 10 to 20 years with this powdered cheese and this is something you can incorporate in your daily diet uh, use every once in a while and you can go through that before it's going to expire so again you don't need 50 100 pounds of powdered cheese but it is something good to if you add these to your prepper pantry you've got a, a quite a few different options to make things a little bit more palatable in a disaster or emergency situation. Next, we have powdered spaghetti sauce. And while the jars of spaghetti sauce that you get are going to last a couple of years, powdered spaghetti sauce allows you to make different meals, whether you're making spaghetti or lasagna or different things that you would want to put spaghetti sauce in, even pizza if you have the ability to make pizza or calzones. But powdered spaghetti sauce would be something great to have if you're making spaghetti or even if you just have some bread and you want to dip your bread or something else in that spaghetti sauce. It's one of those powdered foods that I think you should consider. Also, along the same lines, you've got the Alfredo powder, which is another cheese option, I suppose. Sort of a, you can use this on, on spaghetti and in other dishes, and usually children prefer the Alfredo rather than the spaghetti sauce. So it gives you yet another option when you're making these meals in a disaster or an emergency. Next, we have soup bases, chicken soup bases, uh, even the broth cubes, things like that, that will help you be able to make a meal from scratch, basically. You just put these soup bases together with a little bit of water, if you have some vegetables from the garden or even some freeze-dried vegetables, throw, throw those in there, maybe some egg noodles and make your own little soup. This is something that is, is going to taste a whole lot better than throwing some carrots and noodles in a pot of boiling water and eating it that way. You can spice these things up with the next one on my list, which is the spices and the ingredients. Now, while some of these spices aren't necessarily powder, they are essentially the same thing. Spices are really important in long-term food storage because they do offer you that variety. You can take something bland and mundane, put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, some garlic powder, things like that, and make it much, much better. And in soups, it's an absolute must. And by ingredients, I mean the spice mixes. That way you don't have to mix these together yourself. So whether you're talking about taco seasoning, you're talking about rubs to put on steaks, chicken, pork chops, uh, and they can also be put in other recipes as well. So think about all these different spices that you use on a daily basis, and even some that you don't, and some of these mixes that are already pre-mixed that you would use. Number 16 here on the list is powdered drinks, and this could be anything from coffee, hot cocoa, to the different juice mixes, the, the tang and the Kool-Aid. Anything that you can take to have that, that basic normal water and turn it into something that's a little bit different and adds a little bit to that meal that you're preparing. If you have children, you know exactly how important this is. I usually just drink water anyway, but there are some people that just want something a little bit different, whether that's tea, whether that's coffee, hot cocoa, juice mixes, the Kool-Aid I'm not a big fan of because it takes 18 pounds of sugar for a gallon of Kool-Aid, but that is an option. There are a bunch of different options, and I think with these and the spices, we, we need to make sure we have a wide assortment of different things because in a disaster scenario or in an emergency, the more little things that we have, the more options that we have, the better off our situation is going to be. 
Next on the list, I have protein powder or whey powder. Protein powder can be a convenient and versatile option for obtaining the essential nutrients, uh, particularly where access to fresh food may be limited, so in a disaster situation. You can use this in smoothies. You can even just make a drink and drink it itself. In a situation where we might be exerting a lot of energy and not getting the calories and nutrition that we need, protein powder is a great way to sort of supplement all of that. With a lot of these powders, you've got the peanut butter powder, you've got the butter powder, you've got the milk, and then you've got these protein powders. As long as you've got a little bit of electricity, a little generator to start a blender or something, you could make a fantastic little smoothie that will get you through the day. Number 18 I have here is, again, one of these that is not necessarily a powdered food, but it is close enough that it fits into this category, and that is potato flakes. Much like making bread, potato flakes are a great filler for any sort of meal that you're making. You can make quite a bit of these. They're nice and filling, and it goes great with all sorts of different meals. You can mix some of the butter in these potato flakes and even make some gravy, which is number 19 on the list here, is the powdered gravy. Make some brown gravy, throw it on those potato flakes, and make those even better. You've also got the white gravies that you can use if you've got the biscuit mix or you've got a recipe to make biscuits. Use that white gravy to throw on some biscuits. And gravy is just one of those things that takes something and just kicks it up a notch a little bit. So it takes something that may be a little bit boring, you throw some gravy on it and it, it transforms it and makes it so much better. And along with this, sort of along the same lines, is the last one I've got here, and that's powdered sour cream. With the potatoes, you could have some of this powdered sour cream, throw that on the potatoes. There are different dressings you can make with sour cream, a lot of different uses for sour cream. And again, without refrigeration, this is that option. So you've got the butter, you've got the milk, you've got the sour cream, all those staples that you usually have in your refrigerator. If you have these powdered options available, you can do some of the same things that you're doing today it may taste a little bit different, but it's going to be much better than the alternative, which is maybe a package of long-term food storage food or opening up a can of SpaghettiOs or something like that, eating these foods just to get the calories that you need and not eating them for enjoyment. Having these different powdered foods offers a wide variety of different things that you can do. And with the sour cream, much like everything else on this list, before you go out and stockpile a whole bunch of something, make sure and do some taste tests because some of these are going to be different than others. Some of them are going to have different ingredients. Just make sure and do a taste test. Pay attention to the ingredients. Do your research on these. And then if you do buy them or you do open them up, make sure you're storing them properly afterwards. And that's where the Mylar bags and the oxygen absorbers come in or even the mason jars and vacuum sealing. I recently did a really good video, a really detailed video on using Mylar bags, using oxygen absorbers, how to seal those, and what types of foods are going to have certain different shelf lives. If you want to check that out, you can watch that video here. Uh, but that's it for today, everyone. If you've got any ideas, I know there's probably hundreds more that could go on this list. If you have any thoughts or ideas, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. But with that, take care and prepare, everyone. We will talk to you later.